session. The meeting is being recorded. Welcome everybody to another VSIS Voices webinar. And today talking about the value of volunteer recognition for morale. And this builds on a couple of other webinars and topics that we've done in the last little while. I am Dana, and if you've done a bunch of these with us before, you should know who I am. But here's some pertinent stats uh, that are on the screen. And I'm delighted to have my co-host with the most host, Todd McMullen, joining us. <laughs> and here is Todd. And of course, Lisa is uh, driving the presentation and working on the WebEx tech and the chat and survey via Slido and all kinds of fun interactive things that we have planned for you today. And really the point of this discussion, this is a, an interactive experience. So we'll lay out some information for all of you, but we'll also be asking you questions and kind of prompting uh, the wisdom in the room and for us to share ideas with each other, not just the ones that we've uh, put together to share. And this is for volunteers to feel valued and not just recognized and really focus on gaining their input and trust while improving uh, engagement and outcomes. So starting with what are you all doing now for recognition and morale in your team of volunteers? And um, we can do that as uh, uh, answering in the chat, and I think we might have some Slido choices. So whatever's easiest for you to do, the Slido's got a little green S in the lower right-hand corner of your WebEx screen. But um, I don't right. know if it's um, I don't think it's a green S. I think there's just a little apps button. Oh, there's a little apps button. Sorry, so right. it looks like a green S yeah, on little, my screen. But yeah, thank you for yeah, thank you, that. little apps button. And then if you click on that, it'll say Slido. You can open up Slido. And Lisa, why don't you go ahead and launch that first question? We'll use that as a well, test of I Slido. I have launched the first question. I'll add that sometimes the launch button is in that little box with three little or that little circle with three boxes in the lower right. Wow, good to know. Uh, it's it, my screen says voting closed, so I don't know if we relaunch it or you, I guess uh, mine says just waiting for chat. votes. Darn oh. it. Okay. Well, you can also answer in the chat or you can ask to unmute because there's, you know, a good little uh, smaller group of us starting off this morning. So we can also go to open discussion. Um, some of the more common ways that we've done recognition as leaders of volunteers have, of course, been uh, a big party at least once a year sending cards, uh, having a poster board uh, virtually or in person of uh, volunteer achievements and accomplishments, communicating. Poster board. Poster board. Yeah, Todd likes poster boards. Todd likes poster boards uh, and chocolate and going to the dollar store to fun yes. stuff. That's that's what Todd's all about. Um, but yeah, let us know if, you know, sometimes there's a gremlin in the Slido, sometimes not, but let us know in the chat or ask to unmute and we can talk about what you're doing now for recognition and morale. Yeah, I'm wondering if anybody is seeing that Slido question. Um, I did just type in the chat as well that you can put answers in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm getting some answers in Q&A and some in chat. Um, Arian saying bulletin board with birthdays, information, quote of the month, brain games, sending emails, checking in, semi-annual events to gather. Again, some people are gathering in person. Uh, some people are having in-person events and, and parties and celebrations. Some are do, also doing it online. Um, yeah, I guess for whatever reason, there's a gremlin in the first Slido, but that's okay. That happens. Some people saying it's locked. And, you know, really all of this, all of those are good. We're going to yes and all of those. And the point of, I think, any interaction with a volunteer is it acts as an invitation to stay or an invitation to go. This is a, a, a mantra, a creed, or a good saying that I learned years ago working with Shanti and Project Open Hand here in San Francisco. And just being aware, just having that awareness, not just for yourself, because you probably do have this awareness of volunteer engagement and how every interaction goes, but also letting everyone else on the team or anyone who might answer an email inquiry or answer the phone, smiles are free, saying thank you and the moment is free. So we want to kind of get into this idea that uh, every moment of, of interaction with your current volunteers or someone potentially being a volunteer or advocate or donor out in the community, all of that is the has the possibility of boosting morale and helping people understand the meaningful impact of the work and that they're valued by your 
organization. So um, Todd has some other fun things to say about it. Yeah, and we're just trying to do a little bit of uh, intro intro stuff here at the beginning, just to get everybody engaged and get Slido hopefully working. I think Lisa might have it working. Okay, we're seeing. Um, and all of this stuff is kind of stuff that we all already know. Um, I was looking for some prioritization earlier um, via that Slido to kind of see who does what the most. Um, but we're getting some good input, and I'm going to expand on that just a little bit. You know, we know that everyone wants to be heard and valued. That's an obvious. Um, and there's just a lot of different mechanisms that we've used. Some of them we've talked about, but are you also using um, surveys and these other options? Lisa, is the, is the slide all working? Let's go ahead and launch that and see. Okay, so you're asking me to launch the next one. Hold on, Correct. I need to close this one. Okay, close out. Yep, launch the next one, please. And it's just going to ask these same options that are up here. Which of these do you folks use? And um, we're trying to get some voting going so we can see how many of them are being used the most. I was very interested last time in this session last week that uh, some things that I thought were going to be voted kind of lower were higher, and then the reverse was true. Um, and so it's interesting for me to watch how recognition, how valuation, impact and outcome measurement, whatever you call this process is changing, you know, based on, I don't know if it's the COVID factor, I don't know if it's just the nature of our changing dynamics as a society, but it's very much becoming more personalized mm -hmm. and more, um, almost, I would say, individually invigorating, okay? Kind of a more, uh, you know, everybody enjoying each other's camaraderie and any recognition that could be you know done along those lines even my favorite thing poster boards um really always always well. has, has a poster board uh that's awesome. right yep <laughs> well they're cheap we all know we're on budgets it's okay fantastic. It's that's well right. but, you know i might stop calling it poster boards and call it boards of positivity because i'm seeing a lot of clients doing this on large video screens oh sure yeah in, yep. in I like offices that. and waiting areas but yeah. um, I want to remind everybody, the Slido is working now because I see a bunch of you have voted. Yay. If you look down at the bottom right at those little apps buttons, you should see a Slido button that lets you vote. And if you can't, you can put it into the chat. But uh, Thank you. So what are you seeing there, Lisa, as far as votes? I am seeing that 92% of people are saying informal conversations. Yes. That is the most that. common usage followed by surveys 42 mm -hmm. percent of people are doing surveys 25 percent are doing some sort of boards of positivity i'll take out the word poster thank you mm -hmm. listening sessions are up there no one has a suggestion box and that's probably because suggestion box have become so old school right yeah they really um, have those um survey monkey or qualtrics polls have kind mm -hmm. of i think replaced uh suggestion boxes Interesting. So even more than last week, Dana, what I'm seeing mm -hmm. are those informal conversations. All right. So it'd be very interesting to know from you folks, um, any, you can just type this in chat, you know, what are you asking of volunteers that gets them going on the concept that they are valued? What are you saying to them? What are you conveying to them? How are you asking them questions? That's just something if you want to, you can chat about, or we'll be unmuting mics a little bit later. So think, uh, they're going to do, oh, I like that, Marie. What can we do better for you and that's Marie, a fantastic I, question yeah, yeah i love that one marie because you're just looking at them directly eye to eye and getting right to the point okay you know how can we make this a better experience for you personally you know as opposed to as an organization um arian is saying uh that you feel informal conversations allow to connect which is really important. We talk about that in a minute. And knowing what is going on in their lives and enables you, I mean, yes, I love this. The, the, the very personalization, the trust building, the, you know, the, yeah, that's what, I love the humanity in this folks. Yeah, and, and we're seeing some of the classic, classic hits of the genre of sending cards and featuring people as a volunteer of the month and featuring them on websites and in newsletters. So I love that, you know, you're already all off to a really strong start of understanding this concept of recognition is every day. And the other thing that is kind of the obvious question that sometimes doesn't get asked enough in its most basic form is, why do people volunteer? Do we know the why of the volunteers on 
your team? And this isn't a trick question. Uh, that's that can be something that uh, is also asked in surveys. Like, why why do you volunteer? What do you enjoy about it? What can we do better? Some pretty standard survey questions. If you're doing that once a year or every couple of years, and I have found that in doing surveys that the why is, you know, there's as many reasons as why people volunteer as there are people in the world, but it boils down to they're there because they want to be there. Something about how you've described the mission, if you're able to describe the, the powerful positive impact they have, they're resonating with something in the cause or the mission. And uh, sometimes I think we we chase the why too much or we make assumptions about the why when really if we're clear about the impact people are having and that this is a welcoming place that people can feel uh, that they belong on the team, then they understand that they're valued and having that meaningful impact that makes all the difference in the world. So now we're going to kind of build on this a little bit. We've done the how are you recognizing people and what mechanisms are you using? So your mechanisms and um, and we've talked about why people are volunteering and I love how personalized all of this is becoming here in our call on our call today. Um, but we need to tie this into value. And so we've got to look at this from another perspective. You know, what is the real definition of value as it pertains to both the volunteer and your organization. For instance, is it tied to funding, like the social determinants of health funding that are out there uh, and grants, um, stories of success that you feel are really important to both gain and to give inside of you know, what you're doing, whether it's in healthcare or anywhere else, um, and some other things. And so we do have another Slido. I'm kidding. We have a lot of Slidos today because it's an interactive everybody. Experience. this is a very interactive experience. So <laughs> go ahead, Lisa, if you wouldn't mind launching that and let's see what is it that, uh, you know, how well do you link your value to your mission? That's really the question that's going to come up and it's going to give you some good options and, uh, you know, Tell us what you think, and then Lisa's going to uh, give us our results as usual. But it is really important. Um, there's always an emotional, or I call it emotive, value, and there's a financial value. That you know, what is the real bottom line for the reason the volunteers care, and how do we connect those two without overbalancing one? You know, can we can't get away with just saying to a person, hey, you're really valuable. We really appreciate you here. If the entire program is a sinking ship because money is not flowing and vice versa, we can't just say we can't treat volunteers as if they were paid employees who often who have an obvious and defined role okay that you know brings value financially to the organization and so there has to be that personal touch and lisa what have you got i've got 60 percent of people saying that they would rate themselves at a four out of five on being good. able to connect good yes and 30 percent saying a five out of five Great. And a few saying um, that they're number three, but everybody's up there with three, four, or five. That's excellent. That's excellent. All right. Fantastic. So we are connecting. Boy, it makes me wonder why any of you guys are here. You're <laughs> teaching this webinar yourself. <laughs> this is why we. This is why we interact and use all of the wisdom in the room. And you know, to me, every moment is a chance to learn with and from each other. And so again, like I'm bringing what I've what I've experienced and found to be successful in this topic in the past and Todd and Lisa, but this is about you all as well. And again, it boils down to identifying the shared goal. So people are resonating with the mission or the cause or however you worded your recruitment. We've had tons of other Visas Voices webinars on those topics and tying things into, into your grant cycles and social determinants of health if, for those of you in healthcare and other kinds of line items for the value of volunteers, not just counting hours and, and number of people. But it's even more powerful, especially building morale and really building on the currency of trust. So I think that's that's the currency that we deal in as leaders of volunteers is we're constantly dealing in trust in relationship building. And a huge piece of that that ties value, emotive and analytical together is uh, understanding your shared goals and your shared success. And really communicating back to the volunteers and the rest of the community and the public 
and especially leadership in your organization that these this is how volunteer activities are accomplishing goals, accomplishing the agency mission impact, and how are those goals aligned per person and the task they're doing per volunteer or, or general team member per department for the whole agency with community partners. And we had some great examples in the beginning when you're we asking you, how do you recognize people or build morale and just sharing that information that, yeah, we all got to win as a team. And then also, it can be even more of a bonding experience and, and a build of trust of getting through a challenge together, overcoming a problem, getting through tough times together. We've had an overabundance of many types of tough times in the last few years. And so those of you with your volunteers and your entire team and department and agency, they're coming out um, through overcoming challenges and continuing to work on them together, that kind of builds up morale as well, knowing that you've got each other's backs. And again, all of this, we've done other webinars on data storytelling, but this is a, a sh also show and tell experience where we got this uh, published in the newsletter in the annual report. The board knows the successes you're having. Um, the leadership of your organization executives know the successes you're having and where you are having challenges and could use more resources, but identifying the shared goals with everyone on your team, whatever task they have and enjoying those shared successes is one of the best ways you're going to boost morale through that. Again, every moment of recognition, every opportunity you have. So, as Dana and I were thinking about, well, how do you find that sweet spot between motivation and value and, you know, the reasons why volunteers are doing it and everything she was just talking about and, and, you know, and we think that skills and building leadership inside of your volunteer force kind of is that sweet spot. If we can build their skills, then they feel more valued. If we can build their skills, they tend to increase their longevity. And there's an obvious impact on the financial bottom line as well. And the same thing is true for leadership. So it's kind of that wonderful spot in the middle that if you can do it, which does take resources, then um, great. All right, and we want to be able to build on that. So skills and learning, social networking is another great one. Um, it's one of those things, social networking is great because people take their own initiative and in talking with each other, whether that's online and maybe some e-group that you have running or whether well, they're meeting each other in the cafe at your location or the volunteer room and there's chatting. Um, those things really help. So the more you can engender that, that's fine. Obviously, obviously them personal goals like resume, um, career goals, being able to establish those, which is really important like in some service learning. Um, and I think a lot of you are in healthcare, so you probably have students in some of your locations, medical students, I mean, who have taken that obviously to the extreme. And again, leadership and the ability to level up. And I do believe, Lisa, that we have a, another um, poll here, and it's gonna ask you, how do you improve a volunteer's sense of value? How do you improve their sense of value? And um, of these options, or maybe some others that are in there, let us know what is working for you. All right. And um, whether or not these particular things that I've just outlined really are applicable in your particular situation. And if there's something that you're doing to build skills and leadership and increase value or whatever that's not mentioned in these options, please put it in chat and we'll talk about it. And while folks are voting, I'll share a fun story. This topic came up in a volunteer coordinator resources Facebook group, and it came up in a couple of LinkedIn threads as well, which is uh, someone was asking how often do volunteers get promoted to paid positions or even apply for or interested in paid positions with an organization and people were chiming in at different levels. And I'm honest to goodness, the, the last organization that I worked for full time before con working for myself and consulting full time, we had such a good reputation and this was a conservation agency um, as a career building step that I had to start saying in the volunteer orientation, we love our volunteers, they often become seasonal or full-time staff, and I can't guarantee employment just because you're volunteering with us. And, you know, sometimes that is one of the main whys or factors that people want to be there. They're enjoying the work and the agency has such a good reputation for being an important step 
uh, in a career or sector, in this case, land, land and wildlife conservation, that it kind of becomes the go-to place or there can be waiting lists. And that's a great uh, problem to have is too many. Yeah, that's a nice one. <laughs> that's a nice problem to have, but that can be part of that morale building and someone building their leadership skills and leveling up. Right, Lisa, what you got? Lisa? Oops, had to unmute. Sorry, folks. <laughs> um, we have new responsibilities at 56%. Nice. Nice. Impact, illustrate their impact at 30%. And then teach new skills and service learning are tied for third at 10%. Oh, so much for my big dream of improving morale with skills. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, all right, impact. Okay, what was that first one again, Lisa? Would you mind repeating that? New responsibilities is 50%. That is so cool. It was pretty high last week, too, if I remember mm -hmm. when we did this yes. webinar, wasn't it, Dana? And so if I understand correctly, you folks are, are, are building that morale and the value proposition and increasing the why and all of that stuff by, by giving them new responsibilities. It's almost a, a leveling up through giving more, you know, um, and I like that. And I'm curious, maybe you can type this in chat, as you give them new responsibilities and possibly new skills, is there some kind of a badge or some kind of recognition that you're giving to these people so that everybody knows that they have increased in their responsibilities or their skills? Um, that just, you know, occurred to me because I'm curious. I'm just, you know, we do these so that they could be listened to by others. And I think Marie's saying we offer them the opportunity to become mentors to new volunteers and you it. do have a mentor batch. Okay. That's excellent. So when they obtain that level, then that you could do that. You could do the same thing with if they're a trainer or if they're an instructor of some particular skill, or if they're responsible for a certain part of your organization or program, then um, you can give them, um, I, I hate to say the word title because that sounds like we're employees, but you know, something more Titles fun. are important. We talked about titles that in important. another webinar. Yeah. We did. Okay. Titles. So yeah. something that is either, uh, that gives them the personal and of course, social recognition for having obtained whatever. Um, I love, Todd, that Marie also says that they track who does become a, uh, an employee uh, from a staff, and that, that's an, an interesting and important metric to, to track if you're fortunate enough to have that. I will say I this. I think that's I spent... especially important nowadays when people yeah. are having such a hard time finding staff, and if the volunteer department proves even more their value to the organization by showing that number, very cool. Love it. Great Before I came to work for Visas, um, I was working in the homeless sector and mm -hmm. deploying solutions for homeless, especially faith-based homeless shelters, and recruiting volunteers inside of them. And that transition from volunteer to staff member and the progression between the two was literally statistically the most important indicator mm -hmm. of success for the organization because homeless people become the very best mentors and tutors for other homeless people and so if you can help them to make that transition from homelessness to mentoring of another homeless person or somebody in somebody how do we say it today dana somebody experiencing homelessness yeah, right? yeah. Or, or, or just people who have the lived experience being right. the being the experts on on the process, I think there is we also, go. also a great evolution that that's occurring. I'll also share under new responsibilities. Every time that I have surveyed with agencies or or created surveys for my clients on why why people volunteer and and going into a deep dive, the number one answer when it's been a choice, and I make sure it's always a choice in my survey. So please steal this idea and put it in your surveys if it's not there yet. Is um, that they want people want to feel valued and heard and if there is a mechanism doesn't have to be a suggestion box of, of sharing their feedback and their ideas or the chance to lead a project or new responsibilities is another way i've talked about that that is the number one way that people genuinely feel recognized and celebrated and valued is that their ideas um, have come into motion their project uh, has been a success or they're new they're given new responsibilities they're given these leadership opportunities and that all ties into so we've talked about val you know value on paper budget line items tying into grants social determinants of health funding things like that but the 
real reason people volunteer, as we mentioned, is they want to. There's something enjoyable, even in the tough times or going through challenges together. And so having that social fun factor is still key to morale. It can't all be analytical. It's going to be personal. It's going to be emotional. Uh, interested is interesting. So when volunteers are enjoying their experience and feel fulfilled and that their work is meaningful, those become the best cheerleaders and morale uh, officers or cruise directors for everybody else. So cruise directors, cruise directors. Yeah. I sound yeah. like a love boat, Julie Gopher flashback there. Um, <laughs> That's scary. How old I know. I, I, know. Saw, I saw like, the exact same thing. Random um, Gen X memories popping into my head at this hour of the morning. Uh, and that, so that social factor, again, whether it's, you're able to do this safely in person these days, or some things are still online. I had great fun, uh, with organizations doing virtual ice cream socials, doing, uh, you know, goofy online games together, having a, a YouTube and karaoke night. So there's ways to be social. Um, and we're talking about some of the answers were pre pandemic having potlucks and other, you know, meal sharing events. I think sharing of food and that social time and just kind of non-structured time where people can just chat and build their relationships with each other, build their work friendships. That's so important to a team dynamic that we, we don't want to let go of the social fun. We want to be able to do it safely uh, so that people feel welcome to belonging and, and safe and you know, keeping that that downtime together is as important as the work time together and having one big party a year is fine. But I've also found that when there's kind of one big celebration event at any given agency and I, I throw a good party only about like 25, maybe some agencies, 50% of the volunteers in the before times uh, would show up to the party. And sometimes I would actually get pushback from people saying don't spend money on a party don't spend money on gifts and knickknacks please you know put all of the money that you would put to volunteer recognition you know directly into the into the programs to help the community and, and the clients that we work with and so you never what's the saying todd you're never going to please everybody all all of the time but, but you can please some of the people yeah. all the time and all of the people some of the time yeah, yeah. and so that's why we want to have this balance there's people who love to have events and want to be social and that's the main reason they're volunteering is that sense of community and belonging and other people want to see what are the results of my work and you know are my ideas being utilized so it's that it's that nice balance that it sounds like you're all well on your way to achieving that balance and you know we're sharing more ideas to do that we had a really great comment in last week's webinar at this point mm -hmm. where somebody said that the way they determined the best way to recognize and improve value was to just directly ask the volunteer, Marie, you would like this, okay? You know, what form of recognition do you prefer, all right? How do you really want to be? And some of them would say nothing at all. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't need the recognition and others, well, yeah, no, I want it and this is why. So we do have one last poll, folks, for you to indicate for us which of the traditional forms or maybe even non-traditional like gamification, which forms of recognition are, are are hitting the mark you know what's working the best for you folks so lisa if you can launch that that would be great and then in a minute when we're done with all of this um, we're going to open the mic so we're looking for really good experiences that any of you do have that um, really help all of us to merge all of these things together let's as dana would say get the wisdom in the room mm -hmm. and uh, see if we can't build a little bit um on what's being talked about all right um lisa is it too early what have you got here i think um we need a few more people to vote the poll is open i think along with ranking these i'd love to have people put in the chat as you were saying todd the um what they're finding to be the best um morale builders. And I see there's a great comment from Marie. The Five Languages of Appreciation in the Workplace is a great book for understanding what matters to each person. Yeah, I like that. I haven't actually seen that one, Marie, so thank you for that recommendation. Dana, have you read that one? 
Um, I am familiar with it. I think my sister-in-law had it and when I was staying at her house and <laughs> she, she's, a, she's a VP and a big, big corporate thing. But I think that's true of understanding the languages of appreciation and not, not everything's going to resonate with everyone and how to be recognized. So why not have a mixed bag? And um, Arian has another great comment of, of taking them from interested to engaged and then offering quality over quantity. And I think that is another great just foundational idea for everyone else to, to pick up on and share that. Yeah, in fact, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, Dana. No, I'm, I'm actually hoping that Arian would be willing to talk about that in a couple of minutes. The, the whole issue of quality over quantity intrigued me when I saw that a minute ago. And Jessica um, has a great comment as well of doing a video um, in the past and volunteers like to be featured and talk about what they do and why. And yeah, I love being on camera. Not everybody does, but that's also something, Jessica, that I've done in previous agencies is have little uh, video segments and, and recognition of volunteers when they wanted to participate and then allow celebration of volunteers that maybe are a little more introverted or just not not camera people, uh, but again, having that variety is incredibly important. I know one of our clients has a volunteer video running all the time in their main lobby so that as folks come in, they see these little excerpts and quotes from volunteers and it's been a great recruitment tool for them as well. Mm -hmm. um, Todd, I'll tell you that we've got a bunch of votes here for you. Go ahead. And they're Please. spread um, through the whole thing, the biggest one is communicating value. Number two is causal, causal social casual. activity. Casual. <laughs> casual, sorry. Causality. Casual. Yeah, that, that, there's a crossover um, there. Awards and recognition is third, and training and skills building is fourth. Oh, interesting. So even though you're putting a lot of emphasis on value using training and skill building, it's lower as far as morale boosting. Fascinating. I love it. I love I love when we get get interesting answers like this. Yeah. Fascinating. Well, well speaking of fun, Todd, take us into some of the most fun uh, ways to engage people and and build morale and recognition all at the same time. Gamification! Yay! So there is another whole Voices webinar that Dana and I did just last October on gamification. In fact, after this Web Voices presentation last week, I had a couple of people come back to our support team asking for a link to that. Um, it is in the final slide of this show and will therefore be in the PDF that you can download from the Voices webpage and it will link to our full uh, presentation last October, like I said, on gamification. But in that presentation, we outline several basic elements and you can see them listed here, the kinds of things that gamification can help pull together. And gamification is essentially the ability to do everything that we've been talking about in some fun way. And it can, it can literally hit the mark right in the middle of, of everything we've talked about. It increases morale, it helps people understand why they are volunteering more because people love to socially interact. Um, it helps improve skills if you do it right, like with challenge boards. You know, um, we use this example during the gamification presentation of the cats versus dogs competition in an animal shelter. And, you know, how you can really get these volunteers competing with each other and improving skills and keeping the kennels clean all at the same time. And uh, so there's just fun, cheap, you know, with poster board, all right? Um, possibly the video version, if you happen to have a, lot, a little bit more money, um, ways to get engaged. So please go watch that, um, that video when you get a chance. And my favorite, my favorite thing from gamification that we've talked about before is it's really, uh, Todd, you came up with this word, it's funification of activities. And it, again, there's always a balance of making sure people don't feel like, you have to participate or else, or you're othered, or you're not in the cool kids club if you don't participate. But there's a chance to, you know, uh, who who walked the most dogs, who petted the most therapy dogs, hashtag, you know, share that on social media of like, pet the most dogs. So mm -hmm. it can be absolutely goofy, not at all high stakes stuff. And my favorite example of a fantastic use of, of gamification out in the world is the Duolingo language app 
um, been brushing up on, on my Spanish and, you know, anything, so many things are probably already gamified or have badges and, and uh, leveling up or experience points or little reward animations. A lot of that is already occurring in our day-to-day -day life, especially online and games are really the, the core um, way that humans have fun and interact together um, overall. And all that ties into sharing uh, vision and inspiring each other. Again, these one-on-one -on -one conversations and formal conversations, casual interactions, sending, sending personal handwritten cards is still a great thing to do and things like that and phone calls really went up in popularity when we couldn't meet in person together uh, as often over the last couple of years. And I think that that really comes down to not just shared goals and successes and milestones to tick off on the list, but that there's a real vision of the mission of the agency that everyone um, is participating in and is inspired by each other's work. And I love this, what we've seen taught in the chat of how people are sharing that the videos, newsletters, uh, publishing things on the website, future volunteers, Cork boards, bulletin boards, uh, old school stuff that's that's fun to do as well. And um, I think hopefully this inspires all of you to uh, go into our open discussion. I know Arian um, was interested in sharing and hopefully also Jessica and Marie and other folks on the call. Yeah, this is now, I think, up to you folks. Um, how do we approach all of this stuff? You've heard what we have to say. We've been listening a little bit via Slido to what you have to say. Um, we're going to open the mics. So you do have to kind of raise your hand or put in chat that you would like to talk. Um, you can't just unmute yourself. But I'm, I'm going to go ahead and unmute Arian first, and then Marie has already queued up. So um, let's see, Arian. Arian, you're live on the air. Actually, I am having a hard time unmuting her. Lisa, you might have to do it. Does Lisa have the power today? Lisa has all power. Yeah. <laughs> you said I was live on the air. I'm like, no, yeah. no, I'm not. <laughs> it was close. <laughs> we so, got right. um, yeah, I, I actually realized that the, the verbiage I put into the chat from the interested to engaged isn't, it's what I came up with when I was thinking about it, but it goes back to a community building, volunteering, um, whatever title you want to put on it, um, theory. Um, that I, my, one of my minors is in uh, YMCA professional studies. I actually worked for the Y for about 15 years um, before going to other uh, nonprofit organizations and ending up in healthcare. Um, and their model was taking an individual and moving them from casual to connected to committed. And casual would be like in, in the, the form of the why, you know, somebody who comes in to work out. They're just there to work out. So how do you get them connected? You buddy them up with somebody in a class. How do you get them to be committed? You have conversations. What are they interested in? You know, where are their skill sets? How can you engage them more that you like essentially move them in to the inner circle. And I try, I've tried to use that with the other organizations that I've worked for in my career that, you know, you have somebody who's coming in as a patient, who's a frequent flyer in here and you see them often, you know, they might be interested in volunteering or someone who, um, a staff person who really engages with uh, pet therapy and they say, oh my gosh, my dog would be perfect for this. So how do I pull them into the next? Like, that's great. Can we set up a, 15 minute window to chat about it. How can we get you involved in that? Or, you know, do you want to escort pet therapy? Like if you don't have a, a, a animal to do that with, how do we still get you involved? Um, you know, and once we get them committed, then it goes into those, um, you know, the one, the quality over quantity. Mm -hmm. um, tons of volunteers come in and do a couple hours a week. Um, other ones will come in and do a couple days a week. And, you know, it's somebody who may only engage with uh, one or two patients or staff. And then we have people who engage with lots of stuff. And I find the people who are engaging more with the patients and staff are the ones who are always open to, hey, we have this hole we need to fill in our schedule. Would you be willing to jump in and help out? Absolutely. And then that person wants more of those hours and they're spending more time volunteering than they had initially signed up for because we're giving them the quality 
not the quantity. You know what I love the most about this, Arian, is how personalized you've mm -hmm. made this. Exactly. You know, you have gone directly to them, and regardless of whether or not they have a lot of time or just a small amount of time, you're having active dialogue with them about the quality that they bring, the value that they bring, the time that they bring and why it's important, and how to engage them more, whether it's them personally or their dogs. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Dog people that I've met, there's not a lot of difference. <laughs> No, there's not. <laughs> you have to make it personal. Um, because if you don't, it's they're going to feel that it's not personal. They're not going to want to be engaged. They're not. They're going to say to someone else, um, you know, I volunteer at Geisinger, but I don't think I want to do that anymore. Like, it just feels like I'm just there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's. You know, how are you? How's your husband doing? Mm -hmm. You know, but last week, didn't you? You had that flat tire. How did that end up? A two minute conversation holds more water than not having a two minute conversation or not paying attention to what's going on. Um, and that's been across the board. It, I think it's a universal, it, it doesn't just apply to healthcare volunteers, it doesn't apply to volunteers at a Y or, you know, and other organizations. You have to get to know to know them. People want to feel valued. Well, valued and I think Aaron, you're, you're also yeah. hitting on the universal, um, I, I would call it the number one uh, skill that a volunteer manager has to have is the ability to do everything that you just got through talking about. In a different realm of the volunteerism sector, Dana and I just published an article in the Engage Journal that you all go, ought to go and watch um, or read, excuse me, watch. <laughs> We do these videos. All we'll the make time. a video about it. Yeah, we'll make a video about it someday, <laughs> I'm sure. But it, it, go read it. And, and it's about how the changing nature of a volunteer manager's role as our society changes is going to be given more and more. Our roles are going to be given more and more to technology. It's already happening. And uh, a lot of the leadership of volunteerism is moving to the volunteers themselves, the ability that they have to take charge, lead each other, even engage with you, recruit, um, identify things. But that in no way, shape, or form reduces the value of our skill set as volunteer managers in the equation. It just makes things like what you're talking about, Arian, that much more valuable. You, you, you must absolutely build upon and expand that personal touch or everything that the volunteers are doing just comes to an end. You might be bringing different resources to the table for them to utilize in their responsibilities, but the ability to do what you're talking about becomes paramount. Um, and it's also a lot more fun. So go read the article. Um, it's called Care Circles, Are They the Future of Volunteering? And Aaron also point out that, you know, that that's another way of doing and embodying every interaction is an invitation to stay or an invitation to go. So you've got, this model from the YMCA that again, it works in any part of our sector. It, it works in, in not just volunteer engagement, but community engagement and employee engagement. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's that idea that every moment is an is an opportunity. It doesn't mean that it becomes your full-time job to, you know, be a, an event producer or a content creator or anything else. But, you know, we understand that, again, the currency we we trade in is trust and relationship building. And so uh, if a relationship is breaking down or trust, trust has been broken or the agency makes some decisions that the volunteers don't like, then we kind of take on more of like a, a peacekeeping explainer role and helping people understand and more education. But hopefully most of the time we are sharing um, and asking the open question of how do you feel valued? And it's being heard. It has seeing your ideas in action and mm -hmm. getting that engagement with each other and kind of, you know, creating your own experience. We're, we're getting pretty spoiled in today's world with having customized uh, experiences on online. And this is a great way to do that in person. And, okay. and Dana, looping into that, you know, uh, Marie had put the five languages of appreciation in the yep. workplace. I have read and studied the five love languages, which that's the offshoot mm -hmm. of. And I think having that little bit of knowledge from reading that, or even looking at like a Cliff Notes version of it, enables each of us to work with our volunteers even better because mm -hmm. I might be speaking in purple and they're speaking and they listen in green. And it doesn't work out um, so that and technology, most of my volunteers are older. So having those face to face or um, 
over the phone conversations helps to keep them engaged because I say, can you please do this? You need a computer and you see like all the flashing lights, all the no, I want to back away. If I have to use a computer, I don't want to do this, which loops it back into knowing what they can do, what they can't do, keeping them engaged. It all just keeps circling around each other. It, yeah. Wasn't that the title of that article? Circles of Care circles. Care circles. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. The future of all, yeah, exactly. And, um, and it's meeting people where they are, and that's what it boils down yeah. to: too, is is not, you know, challenging people to or or you know, um, inviting them, not even challenging, but inviting, creating a welcoming, supportive uh, work environment that they literally have the resources they need. Or, but if someone does express an interest in learning a new technology or getting a new responsibility, they have that opportunity if they want it and people shouldn't feel bad if they, if they don't want to do it that way. And I think that's, that's where we're, our facilitation hats as leaders of volunteers comes into play is really understanding that interaction in every moment is an opportunity and to create belongingness and welcome and also letting people not participate when they don't want to participate and that's just as okay. Yeah, so thank you so very much, very much Arian for talking about Fantastic. that. You can actually stay on if you want, but let's unmute Marie, please, Lisa. And uh, let's see what she has to say. I think this is very interesting, Marie, what you said about your recognition preferences being added to the applications. Is Marie? I'm here? trying to find. There she is. <laughs> Sorry, Marie, you hid from me. Oh, she's muted again. Okay, I'm muted. Can you hear gotcha. me? Gotcha. We got you. We we can hear you now. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Um, yes, we just recently um de decided to add the um, and th thankfully Visas has the ability to do that, but. We, we added a drop down menu to our um, application that gives people a list of different things that we do. So we can kind of figure out what their love language is basically res regarding appreciation. Because as you were saying, um, some people don't are introverts. They don't want to do social activities and other people are very extroverted and, and thrive on social activities. So we want to make sure during the year we're offering something that meets all the different um, preferences. So that's really important. But my question was, um, I wanted to hear more about listening sessions because we don't do that. I've heard about them and I'm thinking about them. So if anybody out there is doing it already or can give me a little bit more information on that. Yeah, um, well, you guys folks are thinking and please raise your hand if you can answer that so that um, Lisa can unmute you. Um, listening sessions, well, people are thinking there are, are can be a very, very good thing, um, but they can also be a little bit scary because people aren't always going to come to those to talk about positive things. You know, they're going to come and they're going to be, they can be griping, you know, yeah. and, and so you just have to be careful to moderate it, but they are really, I think very valuable if they are moderated correctly. Does anybody have some experience on that that they can share? Uh, I can. While people answer in chat if they want to raise their hand, I worked for a government agency that had to have public meetings uh, twice a month. And we also, uh, around special projects, and again, this is conservation, so creating new open space parks and things like that and, and those kind of projects. But we we specific I specifically designed a form of town hall listening session that would appeal to families and volunteers and the general public and be interactive. So we did it as a, a kind of a boothed mini fair, and we had rescue wild animals from the local wildlife uh, education center there. So there were things for the kids to do while we had deeper conversations with the adults and were able to listen to them. So rather than a survey. Uh, surveys can can are great. That's a tool in your toolbox. Um, we had multiple volunteers and staff members to speak uh, gosh, four or five other languages besides English that were the main languages in this area of, of San Jose, Santa Clara County, where we were. But it was genuinely about listening to you know the good, the bad, and everything in between, and not being defensive or reactive, but just taking it in as information, and then the community was immediately able to see just within a few months. 
changes and updates to programs that we then communicated, we heard from you and these are your ideas in action. So that was like a, a meta listening session for a government agency for the public having input on policy and decisions and how, how some things went, what parks had dog walking in them, things like that. I'm gonna... yeah, we we do have a great, go ahead. We do have a volunteer, I mean, I have a volunteer advisory council mm -hmm. of about 10 volunteers, but I wondered if, you know, it might be a good idea to open that up, not open the council, but have a listening sessions periodically that anybody could participate in and just kind of wonder if anybody else was going to do that or how they did it. It is really, really important. Um, I see Angie um, and Angie, you can unmute it. We can unmute you if you want to talk about this, um, talking about how caregivers participate in rounding sessions with members mm -hmm. of the administration and then inviting volunteers to participate um, quarterly, it looks like, and it's a great way for them to apparently feel included, give feedback and stay connected to the organization. So, in that case, you're, you're going, yeah, rounding sessions. Now, are those Angie, can we just unmute you? Is that, is that terrible? No, can I just say, Todd. Oh, thank you. You're on I'm, the air. Thank I don't you. see her as being unmuted. Does that. Hmm. Uh, so, I'd, yeah, I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. Ah, because I unmuted Agnes instead of Angie. Good call. <laughs> Now Angie is unmuted. My apologies. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. On the air. Hi, everybody. Yeah, so the rounding sessions, um, all of our caregivers in the hospital as employees were invited to participate in these sessions quarterly with different members of our administration. It's different vice presidents. Sometimes it's the it's the president and CEO. We never really know, but it's 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 so you know everybody can get a different experience. And um, so we invite our volunteers because, you know, we try to include them in as much of the, the caregiver involvement, um, you know, as we can make them as much like employees as we possibly mm -hmm. can. Okay. And they, you know, I get a really good response from this. Um, if somebody, I, I invite them and I say, I, you know, I'm going to accept the first five people that respond. Um, some people just tell me very politely, this is not my thing. Thank you for including me, but I'd rather not participate and that's fine. And other people want to come every quarter because mm. um, not only is it is it inclusive, but they feel very valued and it and they feel very much a part of the hospital because we're including them in in you know this this rounding. So that's something that that I have found that they've been very very um, responsive to. And that yeah, that automatically boosts for morale. I love that so much that it's you're all one team. And so you're already setting that positive culture of it's, we're all in this together. We're all one team, whether we're paid or unpaid or full-time or part-time. And again, people participate, particularly volunteers at, at the level that they want to. And so again, it's that sense of belongingness and not othering them or making them feel excluded if they don't participate. But it sounds like um, you've hit a really wonderful balance with that. So I appreciate, I love that and, comment. That oh, sharing another so thing too, that's really positive about this is a lot of volunteers have seen their ideas come to fruition through this because they will give an idea of how to improve something. And then they'll actually be able to see it it played out, you know, like uh, it will obviously their feedback will come to me. Um, I'll, I'll do something about it or I'll resolve the issue or I'll take their idea and and, um, and implement it. And so, yeah, it's just it, it hits all the marks. And Angie, if I can build on that just a little bit, you know what this reminds me of Dana is the, um, the whole concept of using volunteers to drive the direction of the organization. Dana and I also yeah. do workshop presentations at conferences. You know, we have all these different places and we just did one for the Association of Science and Technology Centers a few months ago on this care circles concept. And in that we used examples in the museum sector of entire museums that have been built from listening circles mm -hmm. where people were getting together and saying, no, we want this museum to look like this and to represent this and to reflect this. And it was a combination of values and local culture and entire museums, multi-million dollar facilities built from these listening circles. And in addition to that, the ability for these same circles to become recruiting mechanisms, you know, volunteers, you know, pulling their friends in because it's such an engaging, positive, innovative, integrated experience 
experience to be volunteering. You know, so we're moving away from the days when volunteer management was this top down, almost militaristic approach to governance to a completely the opposite, you know, to public driven peer to peer. Um, bottoms up type of management. And we're just really in this weird transition right now. But everything you just said, Angie, reminds me, and everything everybody said today reminds me of the importance of that personalization, the socialization, peer to peer, um, you know, moving away uh, from some of the traditional methods and more towards these uh, social engagement definitions for giving. And I have one last question since we're running out of time. And this is something actually the Melissa Bergen and I were just discussing yesterday. And I think that all of you know Melissa. Visas is considering one possibility of many, I'm going to throw it out there, of our future integrating with an app that actually asks patients when they are in the hospital on their phones if they would like to have volunteers come and speak to them or provide some service that volunteers provide. If that happens to sound like a really great idea, I don't want to take a lot of time. Please drop it into chat. We'd love to hear some feedback because we're kind of on that topic. More um, therapy dogs. Yeah. More therapy dogs. <laughs> More therapy More dogs. dogs to pet. That's More right. Dogs to pet. Exactly. I also want to, yeah, and this is this is such a fantastic discussion. Again, thanks for sharing the wisdom in the room. And we want these to Definitely. be interactive. This is a this is a flat organizational structure and uh, high tech and high touch. And I want to make sure that we share some other interesting articles and additional resources that are kind of timeless and and classic. Um, uh, some of them are, are from a few years ago, but all of this still holds true. And these are other uh, great people and um, not just our article in Engage that's coming out, but stuff from Toby Johnson, from Karen Knight, Meridian Swift, uh, Elisa Kosarin has participated in our Visas Voices webinars as well. And these all, uh, it plus the other Visas Voices webinars that are on our page that Todd and I and Lisa have mentioned before. So these are additional resources to sometimes it's a, a two minute article read, sometimes it's a 15 minute article read. But again, there's just such a wonderful variety of ideas and some classic hits that we can still keep doing along with these uh, more modern uh, sociocratic and kind of grassroots from the ground up approaches. This has been a fantastic workshop. I think it's one of our better voices webinars. I love it. I'm so excited today. Yeah. Yeah. Really appreciate your engagement, your openness, um, not just open mic, but your openness to new ideas and sharing your ideas with us and with one another. Um, it's been absolutely fantastic. So I echo what Arian's saying in chat. Thank you so much, everybody. And Marie, um, you all have a great day. Go and enjoy it. Yeah, and oh, Lisa sponsors. will have uh, an archive of this webinar and our fantastic discussion up on the Visas Voices page and site in the very near future. So if any colleagues in your organization weren't able to sign on today, uh, you know, spread spread the links and the, the good news with uh, everyone that this has been a fantastic discussion. We really appreciate you taking time with us today. And we'll have more fun uh, next month. Lisa, what's coming up with Paul in February? Paul is talking about doing online trainings and orientations for volunteers. Um, and he is an expert on training volunteers. So we're excited to invite him as a guest speaker. Yeah, Paul's really fun and fun and fantastic. So that uh, that's a good fit for the February webinars. But again, have a great rest of the week, everybody. And we'll see you next time with Visa's Voices. Have a great day, folks. Thanks.